Welcome everyone to the series Ethics in Caribbean Philosophy at the University of Toronto Center for Ethics. I am Ben Davis, postdoctoral fellow in ethics at the center and the host of the series. We are honored to begin our series with David Scott, professor and chair of the Department of Anthropology at Columbia University. He is also the editor of the acclaimed journal Small Acts, with which our audience interested in Caribbean criticism is surely familiar. The topic of our conversation tonight is Scott's 2017 book, Stuart Hall's Voice, Intimations of an Ethics of Receptive Generosity. Welcome, David. Thank you very, very much, Ben. It's a great pleasure to be here with you and your, and, and your audience. It's a, it's a curious way to be at the University of Toronto, which I haven't been to actually in a, in a couple of years. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, and we hope you can come uh, in the post-COVID world. Well, I decided to proceed via a kind of interview format, in part because this is a format you endorse at the start of your book, as a way of practicing, discerning, and engaged thinking with others, that's your phrase, and what at the end of the book you describe in terms of a dialogical ethics. For those who haven't read it, the book is written movingly as a series of letters to Hall following his passing. You write not only about Hall's voice, but also about his ability to listen, how that listening enables clarification, meaning making us more aware of what we are saying and doing. So to start, could you explain a little more of your idea of an ethics of receptive generosity in Hall, how that is different from tolerance and cosmopolitanism and how receiving is more difficult than giving? Thank you. Ben, you begin with the hardest questions, but... Um... I should perhaps start by saying that um, for me, what was always most moving and most arresting and most remarkable about Stuart Hall as an intellectual was the way in which he attended to what was going on around him, the way in which he attended in particular to what it, what it was people were saying to him, his capacity to hear and very often to mirror back what folk were saying in, in ways that hadn't necessarily been anticipated by the speaker, by his interlocutor. And there was something about that practice which I, which, um, I, could, I recognized and experienced very often um, in his company that alerted me to uh, a, a particular dialogical stance and a dialogical stance that depended, it seemed to me, much, much more on what he was saying to others than what he was receiving from them. And that and, and, and in some sense, it's, it's really from there that I began to think about this particular aspect of his practice of being an intellectual. And it, it struck me as I was thinking about it then, and it strikes me now, that giving, which is, of course, as you, as you well know, an enormously important uh, dimension of both Christian as well as Enlightenment traditions in the West from the Caritas of Augustine to Kant's conceptions of generosity, etc. That the idea of giving to others is an enormously important dimension of ethical um, sensibilities in, in, in Western traditions. But it, it struck me that receiving is a much more complicated 
posture or ethical stance because part of what receiving entails is a, is a way of changing oneself in respect of those with whom one is engaged dialogically. That the question of how to receive, how to receive and how to digest um, what one has not previously encountered, how to receive um, othernesses of various sorts is, as I think we all know, in, in various aspects of our lives, a very difficult way of being. And, and, and part of what Hall's intellectual practice alerted me to was an intellectual practice of being ready to change oneself in relation to um, receiving different kinds of others, receiving um, views that have not been presented to one before, uh, receiving kinds of criticism that one had not anticipated. And that capacity to change in relation to others seemed to me distinctive about what Hall was about and described for me um, an enormously important and complex intellectual way of being. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, I was going to save this point for toward the end, but I'll bring it up now. Uh, and we introduced you in regard to an anthropology department. One of the things you say in your book, I'll quote you here to get the language right, to learn to properly take itself, this is your, a call you have for theory, for theory to learn to properly take itself to be more than one tradition among others, and to learn to practice doing so by first, systematically unlearning its conceit of omniscient privilege. And second, by seeking to listen to and learn from the inside, ethnographically perhaps, the traditions of others. <laughs> so could you say more about uh, this ethnography you invoked here, what it might look like in writing a dissertation or at the Center for Ethics, something like this? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. Once again, Ben, um, <laughs> because you know some might some might some might hear the word um, you know um, uh, th those who are perhaps listening acutely might hear the word ethnographic there ironically, um, but it's only you know half meant in that way. I mean, I mean there to to um, evoke a practice obviously that has been important to, to ethnographic work uh, among anthropologists, a way of um, being ready to unlearn the assumptions with which one enters uh, a, um, a, a, a dialogical or a conversational kind of engagement, being ready to, to undo the, the, the epistemic and other grounds on which one's assumptions rest, or at least to, to put those assumptions into the circle of questioning and to be willing to make oneself uncomfortable enough to learn something about others and, and indeed about oneself that one had not known prior to entering that conversation. I also, I also mean it in some way uh, um, to, to register the senses in which very often um, kinds of, uh, of, of philosophic discourse discount the, uh, the how, how should I put it? The reality of, of engagements, ordinary life-changing um, parochial engagements in the real world through which um, both unlearning and relearning take place. 
So I, I wanted in some sense also to, to invoke the sense, the senses in which for, for Stuart Hall anyway, um, the kind of learning that was in, important to him was not just the kind of learning that took place inside of seminar rooms and um, within the within the the august uh, halls of of the university but kinds of engagements that that for him were the bases for political kinds of changes of 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 one sort or another and so the ethnographic there is meant in some sense to point to a sense of the real if you like a sense of of the ordinary in dialogical in, in engagements, the, the sense of the, the impact um, of, of, of ordinary, but nevertheless poignant uh, receptivities to the world or the worlds around us. So unlearning is important to me. And I think it was enormously important to Hall. And I think much of what I learn about unlearning um, is, 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 is learned from being a witness and being a participant in, in, in those kinds of conversations with him. Hmm. Um, he talks in Familiar Stranger about cooking with others, about the coffee shops, about the music that was circulating. He seems to make a lot of those ordinary local scenes is that you use the word parochial in your response is that part of your push toward the real and ethnographic those kind of ordinary scenes yes i i'm i'm i mean to say that you know it's not that it's not of course that um hall was not keen to recognize the value of, I mean, everybody knows this, the value of, of, of theoretical concerns, the, the, the detour of theory as he, as he very often referred to it, but, but, it, but it was that, you know, a, a, a detour. And uh, that detour was began from and was for him to return to kinds of, kinds of sites of engagement uh, and and scenes of potential change that were that were parts and parcel of of, of ordinary life, not only life lived um, in high theoretical categories. And so I want to I want to you know to keep us al alert to that aspect of of his work as well. But I also want to to point to um, the ways in which this way of learning from others and learning with others, learning about others, learning about oneself through others was, I think anyway, crucial for Hall's very conception of what thinking was about. That, it, that although obviously in, 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 you know, in, in Arendt's Socratic way of thinking about it, that, that, that thinking took place as part and parcel of the, the two in one in any individual thinker's mind, so to put it. For Hall, thinking was that, but it was also much more than that. That thinking, that thinking was, was, a, was an engaged dialogue, dialogical process with others in the world, with others in his midst, not just the other in his mind. Um, and I think that, that, that altered both the character the, as well as the content, as well as the content of the form of his way of carrying on thinking. Hmm. Form in terms of an essay as opposed to a treatise or form in what sense? Form in the sense of, the, of not just the, the, the substantive um, um, matter that thinking was about, but the very but the very architecture of 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 the process of thinking as such. 
I mean, we could talk, uh, you might later on or, or whenever about the form of the essay and why that's, I've always thought that was enormously important to him. But, but here I'm talking about the level of, at the level of thinking. And mm -hmm. Hall was in a certain sense, never not thinking, never not engaged in a, a, a process of um, dismantling assumptions uh, reconstructing contexts, intervening in, and irrespective of the, the, the substantive um, um, spaces in which that took place, whether in semiotics or around marks or representation or the visual arts or whatever the, the topic might have been, there was a particular mode of being in that thinking process that was distinctive to him. And it was dialogical, not just in its effect, but dialogical at its root, at its, at its core. And that's, that's what I want to, to, to get at. That's what I want us to, to as it were, behold, um, or to hear as we think about Hall and his way of being an intellectual. Mm. Okay, that's helpful for me too, as I think through this. Um, we, I don't have a question on it, but because the essay is important and because it came up here, could you say something on, and you, it's in your, all over in your book, the, the argument for the importance of the essay as Hall's form? <laughs> um, I, there, 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 there's a lot to say about that. Um, uh, there's a lot to say about the fact that that you know he he um, it, it was sometimes said of him that he that you know that Stuart Hall wrote no no there are no monographs or um, then to, to, in in which his in in which his name is inscribed in some in the hard road to renewal the, the collection of essays. Um, or the book he wrote with Paddy Wanell on, 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 on art, perhaps um, come closest to it or, or, in, or you know, the memoir that he writes afterwards, but the memoir form is itself interesting and important. And so there is a question about the relationship for Hall, about the relationship between, between thinking and writing and and how he imagined the, 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 the form, the embodied form of thinking in writing. Um, and because for him, you know, thinking was, was always provisional, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's not entirely surprising that the book form was 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 never one that appealed to him. There was no conceit, I think, in um, in his understanding of himself as an intellectual, that he had to bring writing to an end. That 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 full stop at the end of a monograph was not important to him. That it was, in some sense, for him, a, a conceit, an intellectual conceit that that you could that you could bring writing to an end. And so the essay form, I think, was really his metier and because for him, it allowed for a mode of, of thinking that was, that was closest in a sense to speaking. And for him, and then this is very important for the very idea of, of his dialogical thinking, because in some sense, I mean that literally, that he thought out loud in speaking and that the, the essay form is in some sense closest to that, to that thinking aloud modality in, in, in which um, there is no assumption that the thought or the, or the intersecting thoughts that constitute the, the process of the making of, that, of the, that essay can be brought to an, 
can be brought to an end. Any, any full stop um, at the end of the essay is but provisional to be taken up ag again or not as, as the case may be. You know, and it, it, it reminds us, I think, that many of Hall's essays are connected um, that, or, or that they would, be, they would be essays that were various versions of, 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 of thinkings out loud, so to speak, around um, uh, a, a, a topic, you know, the topic of, of, of black identity, for example, in the, in the 1980s, there are a number of essays that are, that are um, variations on a, on a theme that was, so to speak, inexhaustible. And that sense of, of again, himself as, a, as, a, as an intellectual who could not bring thinking or thinking speaking or thinking speaking writing to an end is captured in his way of, um, of, of, of writing the essay. Um, maybe uh, an easier or more straightforward question than Hall and the essay. One of the things I wanted to ask you about, you, you have a 2005 article, Stuart Hall's Ethics, um, as well. And I'm trained in philosophy and in ethics. And Hall seems uh, rarely discussed in terms of a, something like a, a tradition of ethical theorists or something like this. It seems to be uh, something you're pushing and that ha you have opened my eyes to. So part of what I am interested in and what we could talk about here at a Center for Ethics is why read Hall as an ethicist or why read him as offering an ethics? Why frame him that way? Again, again, a very provocative and, and, um, and interesting question. And once again, there are many ways into it. And, um, and so I won't presume to, to, to exhaust them here, but I think that one of the things that um, is important for me anyway, in this respect is that so uh, uh, okay so a good deal of this obviously has to do with my own my own preoccupations my own larger preoccupations as well as the the preoccupations that i read in and through stuart hall um and one of the things i was going to say a while ago that that's always been um, important to me was to was to was to read Hall into areas conceptual, disciplinary, thematic that he would not necessarily have recognized in his own work. To and part of the re, part of what part of the reason from I, I suppose that that was you know as it were almost intuitive for me is that I don't I don't grow up inside of cultural studies I, cultural studies is not for me had um, a space of uh, of theoretical stakes and so the question for, of Stuart about Stuart Hall for me um, was never the, those that had to do with um, the virtues of the kinds of methodology around the question of culture and politics that cultural studies put on the table. And so for me, the question about Hall <clears throat> was always already to begin with something other than the intellectual content of the work that he was doing again across the variety of, of fields uh, as well as topics that he uh, engaged in. So 
so that's the first thing that 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 for me hall was hall was always more than um those the 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 the, the disciplinary questions around which or out of which he spoke and taught and 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 wrote but it's also that it's also that you know apart and partly because of that the way in which i always heard the question of cultural studies um for him uh, uh, as well as others when we can come to some of these other um um uh, thematic arenas diaspora is the one that i'm that i often think of in this respect as well that the question of cultural studies for for stuart hall was 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 partly also a question of an approach a way of coming at the world and for me in some sense um the, the question of, 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 of ethics turns principally on, you know, for, for want of a, of, a, of, a, of a better phrase, and, and you know, you, you will undoubtedly hear Foucault in the, in, in the echo chamber of my head, it is had to do in some sense with the ethos of conduct, if you like. And, and Hall, to me, was preeminently a thinker who thought through and about conduct, intellectual conduct, political conduct, the conduct of intervention, what intervention was about, whether intervention in a, in a, in a political field, intervention in a disciplinary enterprise. And in some sense, cultural studies um, was from, from, from the beginning. I mean, it, 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 there were, Obviously, it transformed itself in various ways, but was a strategic way of asking questions about the nature of institutions, of disciplinary arrangements, of political fields, etc. It itself obviously became institutionalized um, in in Britain, much less obviously in the United States, but um, partly because of cultural anthropology. But but and so it. You know, there was to begin with a, a mode of thinking in Hall's work that seemed to me um, as being characterizable as an ethical mode. Now, Hall would never have thought of himself as an ethicist, to use the term um, you, you used earlier. He would never have thought of himself that way. He would never have thought of himself as a philosopher. Um, he, you know, he always thought of himself in very modest terms as a thinker, perhaps, hardly a theorist, but as someone who, as he loved to say, went on theorizing. Um, and so the, 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 embedding himself in substantives, um, you know, in, in great or grand nouns like ethicist or philosopher or, um, was always a, a kind of a, a kind of posture that he would raise a doubt about, and he and he's talked about this in um, in 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 a, in a variety of ways. Some of them that have to do, had to do with his own formation. Some had you know that had to do with um, his time at Oxford, um, where where he was surrounded by people who thought in profoundly ethical in profoundly ethical terms. And it's always been interesting to me, for example, that one of the, one of the important philosophers at, at Oxford at the time was Stuart Hampshire, right? Who Stuart Hall would always talk about encountering. Um, it, you know, in, in particular in the company of his great friend in those years, Charles Taylor, um, um, and you know they would be having arguments with Isaiah Berlin, and so there were there were large philosophical questions that that were that were in his midst, so to speak. But that's not the way in which he he would have characterized 
what appealed to him about the relationship between language, thinking, intervention, and so forth. F.R. Leavis was for him um, someone whose way of thinking about the English language and English literature had ethical implications of, of a variety of sorts, whether to do with the very idea of civilization uh, at a macro level or, 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 or at, at more micro levels at what it was, what, what was entailed in reading a, a poem line by line. So I want to say that there, that there were certainly profound ethical assumptions that were embedded in the, in the very way in which Hall took the intellectual enterprise, um, embodied it, and as it were, performed it. One could, for example, I've been thinking about this, write an essay about Stuart Hall and Wittgenstein and to think about the ways in which a, 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 a conception of the uses of language um, was without having necessarily read philosophical investigations embedded in the way in which um, Stuart Hall understood or, and thought about what the relation was and what the, or what the relation should be between conceptual language political intervention, meaning, and so forth. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that gets in some format. There would be, there's a lot to say about all of this, of course, <laughs> which, and one could go on and on, but I don't know. No, it's true, and it's, it's helpful. I think we're all enjoying your uh, answers and learning this about Hall. Um, so one of the concepts that your answer brings to mind for me is conjuncture, which you make the argument, and this is not how it's always seen in the literature in your book, you, you point out that a conjuncture for Hall is not just this descriptive social historical reconstruction, you, that, that's your term, but instead something like a moral and political category. That conjuncture offers something uh, uh, of this ethics and politics that are connected that you were talking about in your answer. Uh, can you expand a little bit on this important concept in Hall and how your distinct reading of it in terms of ethics and politics plays out? Uh, again, you know, it's funny, it's funny to hear about the book, Stuart Hall's Voice, because I haven't looked at it in, an, in, in, an, in a number of years now, it was published, I guess, in 2017. And, and these quotations and, and, and phrases that you are referring to are, uh, sound, sound roughly like me, but I don't remember them exactly. Um, the idea of a conjuncture I, I think um, captures a lot about the intellectual that Stuart Hall was. And he thought of conjunctures, I suspect if you, if you, if you asked him, in terms of epistemic and political categories. Um, I mean, strategic ones, nevertheless, rather than, so to speak, foundationalist ones meaning that reading a conjuncture for him was an attempt to discern the extent to which a, a, a particular configuration of conceptual political possibilities still existed in the way in which one had hitherto presumed that they existed. Um, and, and that for him was, also, was, was, was always crucial for, if you like, reading the present. It's always struck me as interesting. I mean, Hall always, you know, took himself as thinking in relation to terms that he might have borrowed from Michel Foucault. Um, but, but Foucault never thought about the, the idea of a present at, at the very micro, immediate levels at which Hall thought about how to intervene in what might be called the now. 
Um, and so the question of a conjuncture for Hall was a way of reading the now. And he would have, I think, um, sought to, to raise to the surface the, the cognitive ideological character of what a conjuncture uh, was made of in order to think about what kinds of political um, possibilities were now perhaps foreclosed and what kinds of political possibilities were now open. And obviously, you know, the, 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 the best known um, arena in which Hall tried to work this out was um, in the moment of the emergence of Margaret Thatcher, mm -hmm. right, in the late 1970s. Um, but it's also part of Hall's thinking to try to grasp, to try to discern, to try to um, feel one's way toward the, the kind of conduct that should be embodied in, as he would, as he would often say, using a, a term he borrows from Althusser, who borrows it from Lenin, to bend the twig in the direction of that possibility. And therefore we come back once again to the question of conduct, to what, to what the being of the intellectual or the political intellectual ought to be like as she or he or they turn their, their, um, their attention, their being, their mode of practice in that direction. And so the, the question to me, the, 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 the question about the kinds of goods, the kinds of values, the ethos that were at stake in shifting the terrain um, in, in, in one direction away from an, uh, another one, um, uh, suggests uh, ethical dimensions that for Hall were, were not um, uppermost in his mind and not, and not up, uppermost um, be, because they were simply absent. But well, I think we have to remember that, that Hall's own formation um, was, a, was, was one in some sense generationally in which the question the, the questions of political change of a large uh, social and political character were on the table until almost the very end of his life. And therefore, what we now think of as the moral turn, for example, as a kind of post-Cold War phenomenon in which the, the age of human rights has put questions about, about individual and collective conduct on the table and given us categories like trauma and memory and so on that infuse the languages through which we think about um, the relationship between the old and the new. These are not categories that are part of Stuart Hall's thinking. Um, so for him, those questions turned around the question of the political and turned around the relationship between the political and the cultural, uh, uh, rather than the question of the kind of conduct that intellectuals embody or pursue or urge um, as ways of, of bending the twig in new directions. But I want to read him um, in some sense against the grain of his own proclivities in order to, to try to, to, to think about tacit dimensions of his intellectual mode of being and his intellectual toolkit that might not otherwise be as visible uh, as, 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 might, as, as they might be, or, the, uh, or as they might be made to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. I want to uh, remind our audience they can pose questions in the chat, which we'll get to pretty shortly here in a, in a larger uh, conversation. Um, Okay, something I was thinking of in your response there and your previous discussion also of the context in which Hall was thinking 
um, Charles Taylor and others is he, in his memoir in a few places, he is clear that he gets asked sometime if he's part of the 60, the generation of 68, and he says, no, I'm of the generation of 56. And I think that there's a lot of attention paid to 68 when I lived in Minneapolis a few years ago, the museum there had an exhibit on the year. I haven't seen such an exhibit on 1956 as, as a year that itself brings this kind of attention. Uh, certainly not in, in the U.S. Academy. It seems 68 is more popular. So I was, would like to pick your brain a little bit on the importance of 56 and this context, if you have thoughts on it, uh, compared to 68 or otherwise, how that year of nuclear disarmament and, and Hungary and the new left and these things was important for Hall. You know, it's not as though, of course, 68 wasn't enormously important to him. 68 was enormously, enormously mm -hmm. important to him. But he comes at 68, if you like, at the conjuncture of 68 from a formation that is shaped around an earlier conjuncture. And although he doesn't say it quite um, or very often, that the very conjuncture of, of 56 is itself shaped by earlier conjunctures. Right, I would say, for example, the conjuncture of Jamaica 1938. Right, um, so but 58 is worth unpacking and 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 opening up because yes, he returned to the question of 1956 over and over again. Um, he, he arrives in London in 1951, but a schoolboy arrives in Oxford and um, with a colonial education and, in the, and, and arrives in 51 out of uh, an emerging in some sense, galloping context of political decolonization in Jamaica uh, and arrives into post-war London and then Oxford um, in a, a time of very, very rapid transformation. The background is important and um, to, 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 to bear in mind because there is much that is, I think, um, sh that, that is, is shaping um, what George Lamming very famously called in The Pleasures of Exile, a kind of anticipation and uh, and, and, and what I talk about in, an, in a little essay that I've just written called Stuart Hall's Vernacular Modernism, a kind of anticipation for um, uh, a kind of modern being as a, as a, 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 young, as a young intellectual interested in the arts and, in, and interested in, in politics. And uh, part of what, so, so Hall is in some sense and Hall is already in the context of, of, of Oxford reading um, and absorbing very, very rapidly um, what is going on. It, it, in many ways, it reminds one of CLR James, a generation before arriving in London in 1932 and by, and by 1938, 1939, 1940, he has, he has transformed himself into one of the most acute observers, not just of British politics, but in an emerging sense of US politics as well. And that's partly, I think, uh, the, um, the uh, and part of that in some sense has to do with the nature of, a, of the kind of colonial cosmopolitan, of the modern colonial cosmopolitan education that both James and Hall were partly formed by. But clearly a lot is happening in, 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 
in, in Oxford and in, in London at the time. Um, and, and, but 56 is a kind of, is a kind of break moment. There is of course Khrushchev's speech and Khrushchev's speech um, at the 20th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union um, has different kinds of consequences, some of them more permanent than others, but one of the in important consequences in the context of, of Britain was the departure of, of a number of very important Marxists from the Communist Party of, of Great Britain. Um, E.P. Thompson being uh, for Stuart Hall, in, in, the most important um, um, among them. So 56 is crucial for the emergence of uh, both a critique of a certain uh, idea of Marxism as, as a kind of political uh, ideology or political discourse and the possibility of a space in which alternative ways of thinking about Marxism had more space, what E.P. Thompson would eventually call a kind of Marxist humanism, um, had more space. And that, that is, is, of course, is, of course, crucial. Um, there is, as, as you mentioned, um, Hungary in, in uh, the, the, the emergence of that, the, of, of that break. Uh, and, and Hungary is of course very important, not just because of the, of, of, the, of the kind of revolutionary possibility that breaks, but the emergence of different modalities. Again, Hannah Arendt was a great fan of 1956 for this very reason, Hungary 1956, because of the emergence of, 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 of proletarian councils that, 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 that began to think about modes of self-rule and self-determination at different levels. Um, but there's also Suez, right? And, and uh, um, the invasion of, of Suez and the, 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 the confluence of forces that sought to discipline and turn back um, Nasser's anti-colonial project. And so 1956 was a conjuncture, as Hall always described it, of the central issues that, that, that he understood to be core to his emerging formation, the question of, of, of anti-colonialism and the question of the possibility of a kind of socialist discourse um, that might renew the possibility of, of autonomous working, working class action. So 56, 56 is, 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 is important and, and 56 opens, there's another question here in, 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 in the conjuncture of 56 and which is the emergence of the kind of, in Britain, in the, in the wake of the, of the, of the war, of a kind of enormous discontent uh, among white English youth, right? Um, and that, that discontent is also, you know, it, of course that discontent then feeds the emergence of, of the Beatles and, and other um, um, groups of, of that sort and, and feeds transformations that are already at work in popular culture. But also the conjuncture of 1956 is, is, and Hall doesn't want to talk about, but it is the, con it is the conjuncture of the, of the maturing in some sense of Windrush, and the, which, which explodes in Notting Hill in 1958. So we have here, I think, a, a real watershed of different um, converging elements and dimensions that are formative for what Hall begins to think of as new kinds of possibilities in the late years of the 1950s. <laughs>
So the you, you know universities and left re and left review, which you know these, these are Oxford folk um, who are meeting and trying to think about the implications of 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 Suez and of Khrushchev and of Hungary and and so forth, and they 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 sort of run into in some form the the communists who have broken from um, the communist party you know the, the, the great historians group of the communist party of great britain and they find themselves sharing very significantly a kind of discontent with the way in which um, that moment is being thought because they recognize in different ways that they are in some sense in a new and as yet um, not easily described conjuncture. And in some form, what, what eventually, um, what, what, what both enables and, and subsequently um, disables the, the, the confluence that becomes new left is a, is a difference in the way in which the conjuncture was understood by the generations that came together to found the first new left in, in, in the first place, the generation of, of E.P. Thompson and so on, and the generation of Stuart Hall. And in, in, in some respects, their languages of apprehension of that conjuncture were not, didn't easily, um, didn't, didn't, didn't sit organically uh, together and they saw different possibilities they had different languages in which to think about 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 that conjuncture you know Hall's enormous interest in in popular culture is already taking shape here his interest in film and art and 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 therefore his interest in a dimension of human activity that he thought of as as ineradicable uh, and that politics ought not simply to think about but to think through um, is already taking shape here. And if you read those essays of the late 1950s, I'm thinking about one now which, which is called I think something like the new, the new conservatism and the old um, in, in, which, in which Hall, you see him recognizing that the, the conjuncture of, of 56 has produced um, new forms that are not simply reducible to the old languages of description. He doesn't yet have the concept of a conjuncture, but he has the, 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 a way of trying to describe something about an old, that is no longer adequately held in the old languages of Marxism or, 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 or of any other language, conceptual language. And you see him groping toward uh, an, an attempt to, to describe or re-describe the conjuncture, again, for him, in ways that would open out um, new possibilities, new ways of of seeing the world in which he he lived. I can't hear you. I muted myself, thank oh. you. Before we get to the q and A, I I wanted to uh, read a, your critique of political liberalism in the book and offer you a chance to speak on it or the present conjuncture or something like this in your own voice uh and reflection reflecting on the present but also to give our audience a sense of the writing and your style with, with which you approach this book so let me read from 129 here tending to treat conflict and contradiction in largely reconciliatory and assimilative ways political liberalism remains deaf to the radical implications of dwelling at the noisy vulnerable edges of encounters with difference where one's ability to hold oneself masterfully away from what one cannot control, what one cannot shut out, avoid, or repress, frays and breaks down 
and leaves one helplessly overtaken by unbidden otherness. What can I say? What can you say? Do you want to elaborate or talk about the present or how you um, think of the conjuncture and liberalism? Again, again, there'd be a lot to talk about there in some form and to talk about it in whether in my own voice or or thinking about 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 Hall, because I mean I I I don't remember exactly what the context of the passage was, but um, and and I don't want you to remind me, but uh, but the question of of before I come to what I might mean, if you don't mind, the question of of um, liberalism here is many sided. Partly because I am thinking about liberalism from inside of the North American context. And I'm, I'm not unselfconscious of that. And that it's a context of discussion about liberalism that was not quite shared in the same way in the intellectual or intellectual political contexts in which Hall um, spoke and, and, and wrote. Um, and it was a, you know, it was, it was partly also a, a, a you know, a, 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 a context of, of questions that, that Hall and I often talked about the difference between thinking from the, is if you like the, the cultural political context of the US and thinking from the cultural political context of, of Britain. And this question of liberalism is, is, I think, very important and very important for the way in which Hall thought about the landscape of ideas in contestation, for example. It was always very interesting to me, for example, and I talk about it in the book, I think, somewhere, that, that Hall never felt that he needed to grapple with John Rawls, for example. He never felt that liberal theorists were, um, were were, if you like, um, uh, owed that gesture. <laughs> Whereas in the context of, of the US and in the context of, the, there, there is one, 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 one almost feels an obligation in some sense to find a path through the thicket that has been produced by the transformation of the landscape of liberalism initiated in part by a theory of justice and the various kinds of debates that have followed a theory of justice. And that in some sense, of course, is, is in part my own context. And the, and the, and the question that, are, that emerges out of the, I think the passage that, that, that you read um, alludes, I think, to issues that I am currently in, in the middle of thinking about um, um, reparatory languages uh, and um, you know, transitional justice questions, uh, which, 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 which I have partly written about before, but trying to think about the ways in which, um, first of all, the, the ways in which liberal languages not just the languages that call themselves liberal, um, but I might say the, lang the, the liberal character of, of post-modern, post-structuralist, post-colonial kinds of languages, the liberal character of those languages um, foreclose uh, the possibility of keeping open um, the stony ground 
of non-reconciliation, so to put it, that keep open the possibility that in, 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 in language that I currently use, that there are some forms of past harm that are irreparable, that are not, that are in which reconciliation um, is, is, not, is not possible and not um, desirable. Now, all, much of this, I have to say, Stuart Hall would raise a serious eyebrow at um, because not that not that for him um, the, 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 the politics of change was one of a politics of reconciliation. I think he would have rejected that. Um, but that but that a politics of change nevertheless depended on the the the, the, the possibility of kinds of openings that 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 I, I want I'm, I'm, I'm trying here not to use um, terms like convergence terms like like um, compromise but those are not um, ill-considered terms where Hall where, where Hall's practical politics was concerned, th that, there are, that there are kinds of transformation that he would have thought of that are, that are so to speak, incremental, that depend on modes that both shut down and open out, that conversations that come to an end, that create um, hitherto um, unsuspected new openings for other conversations and yet other conversations. So for him, um, irreparability, which is a language which I, which I want to use and which is a language that he would have frowned on or doubted or, or hoped against, um, is, 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 is partly what's, what, what I'm alluding to or referring to in the passage that, 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 you, that you quote that liberal language wants to insist on the priority of, the foundational priority of reconciliation. That reconciliation comes as it were before any other possible dialogue of economic reform, of mm -hmm. social reform, of political reform. We have in some sense to agree on, um, on something. And, and there is something of that that I think is increasingly difficult to sustain. Hall would perhaps have disagreed, but there was much in our conversations that we disagreed on. You get some of that sense of the back and forth in the book too. It's quite uh, lively. Well, before I turn to the Q and A, I want to, uh, Thank you for this discussion. I can't take notes with all of my moderating and hosting roles, but I'll go back and listen to it. Uh, I have learned from your comments, so thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Okay, so I promised you this, and this will all be cut out, so people will be have questions pouring in and- uh... Oh, interesting. Bef before I, before I, before I, um, I, I tried to, to, to tackle that, you know, one of the things that, um, that I think I talk about it in 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 the book, but it's always it's always struck me as as so interesting about about the quality of speaking, and and therefore about the kind of engagement that we are are having here, and that um, you know you say to the audience that not not to worry, I'm going to delete the Q and A, but one of the things about questions and answers, I I think, and, and the idea, the very idea. Of, of questions and answers, as you might know, is 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 crucial to in to the way in which I think about intellectual life. But that but that um, I might and perhaps a, a questioner might say misstep in in speaking. Mm -hmm. But but and and but one of the things about speaking is that it requires more speaking and more speaking. That the only way that you can 
correct something that you have misspoken is by speaking again. And that that speaking again doesn't simply erase the miss the misspeak, um, but layers it. And it is that layering, it is that endless dialogical layering that I think is enormously important mm. to the kind of life in speaking that, that Stuart Hall lived. So I think empathy, I think empathy is 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 close to what um, I want to mean by um, receptive generosity here. I think that receptive generosity entails a kind of empathy, but I don't know that empathy always entails um, receptive, the, the kind of receptive generosity that is about both unlearning and relearning that for me is crucial to Hall's way of thinking. One of the things about, about empathy though that, that you know, I, I will have now to think about a bit more is that empathy of course gathers within itself a kind of um, affective posture, a kind of um, um, affective field of relating that I think was, was also very true about Stuart Hall's way of being in the world, of, of leaning toward um, his interlocutor in a way that produced a context, a context of empathetic at easeness. Um, and I think that was that was that was important to his his way of 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 attuning himself, of attuning himself. What, you, so I, I'm, I'm hesitating here. I think the question is a great one. I, I'm hesitating because I wonder whether um, empathy requires a level of, 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 um, rubbing down, perhaps, if not necessarily erasing um, disagreement, and I think that I think that receptive generosity, as I want to hold it open as a way of thinking about Hall, retained the, the possibility of deep and profound disagreement and difference, D difference and disagreement that that he might learn from, but that didn't undermine um, the, the, the very otherness with which sometimes difference presents itself. So I want to, I, I want to hold that, although I, I hear what you're saying about empathy and, and receptive generosity, and I, I, I will have to think more about that. 